Ready Check Radio. What's up, Internet? It is Thursday. It is 7 p.m. Eastern. That means here on Twitch.tv slash ReadyCheckRadio, it's time for the Relic Grind, our Final Fantasy XIV Square Enix podcast. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us. If you didn't join us and you're listening to it on our Spotify channel, watching it on YouTube, or watching it right on ReadyCheckRadio.com, R-A-I-D. E-O, uh, dot com. We appreciate you coming by. Make sure you give it a like. Make sure you give it a sub. Turn the notifications on and tell your friends, damn it. If nobody watches it, we're just talking to ourselves. And if you get a minute on a Tuesday, <laughs> Thursday, Saturday for one of the shows, stop by the Twitch channel maybe. Check it out. Hang out and chat. Or one of the hundred bajillion other times the streamer is on. Check the scre- streamer schedule. The screamer schedule ah! on uh, readycheckradio.com. We play everything. We literally play everything but today it's all about final fantasy 14 my brothers tarkoth my brother chronos we are one week away from the Mm. big reveal tarkoth how are you how you holding up greetings programs uh i got the itch to talk about some news and i I got i got another itch for the announcement next week i might need some tough acting to act Oh my god! He's got, <laughs> he's got another itch, but we're not going to talk about that one. Oh, that's wrong, wrong kind of cream. Hey, okay. you got a what is that? A jacket back there? Yeah, I, I may be sad, but still got a. Was that color. the championship color or the championship jacket? Oh no, you guys yeah, don't my, get one my, of those that this year. My, my tears are my tears are uh, orange and pewter. Would you rather go one and out like the Steelers, or make it to the championship game and miss the big dance? Oh, championship game. Dude championship game no doubt i don't know i don't know <laughs> what do you think chronos how are you holding up one week from big announcements i'm holding up pretty well um I, I mean we got a little bit of a surprise right like i mean to hold our time over i guess until you haven't flipped your bed so know. things must be going well <laughs> yeah 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 yeah. it's it's uh it's nice and made yeah, you know? i'm waiting for the show it means, it means it's a good it means good things are coming i'm waiting for the show that we just log in your hair's a mess and the bed's <laughs> leaning up against the wall <laughs> it's just like what kind of thursday is chronos at <laughs> poor adam what's going on oh, here that's a, that's a bad that's a bad raid day or something <laughs> that happens. that's one week into ultimate prog well yeah, i mean yeah, get back to me then right well being a uh, final fantasy 14 and square enix news show right you, you do have to have news and and granted sure. we got some stuff to talk about but with Big announcements a week away with the announcement showcase, followed immediately by a live letter. Yeah, there's not a ton of Final Fantasy XIV news, but Yoshi P and Team did manage to squeak a little bit out. Now, before we get to that, the the 545 stuff uh, that will come out on February 2nd, 5-5 details were not spilled, but teased when they will be spilled. They'll be spilled in the live letter, gentlemen. See. Now, the live letter happens after the showcase. So, basically, in, in my mind, this takes any 5.x stuff, 5.5, five, 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 you know, 1, if, there, if there's going to be a beast or anything like that. That takes that out of the announcement showcase if it was... Yeah, big, they're moving it to the live letter. So to me, that huge flag that, yeah, the announcement showcase is strictly going to be 6.0 dot forward. Am I nuts, Kronos, or am I on, on target there? No. That's on point. Yeah, I don't expect anything different than that. Um, initially, I, think initially, I thought the they could that... get away with it. They were going to do a little 5.5 five stuff and then, you know, p- right. to pad a little bit of time and things like that. But apparently not by announcing this yeah, was going to be the live gonna be letter. A... I think it's like a four hour difference between when the uh that's like the show starts to when the live letter starts. Yeah, that's the thing I wanted to get your opinions on, gang gang. So what does that mean? Does that we estimated and, and granted we had no inside knowledge, no idea of what exactly was gonna be revealed. We thought there was gonna be a lot. I we tossed around eh, this will probably be like an hour and a half, maybe two hours ish. But when you look at the times now scheduled for the announcement showcase. 
and the live letter, there is a four hour gap there. So do we have a three and a half hour showcase, half hour break into a three hour live letter? Do we have an hour and a half showcase with a two and a half hour gap into a live letter? What what does it mean, Tark? What are you guessing? We were just actually talking about this before you came on. Uh, I'm thinking it's going to be two to three hours. They're going to have an hour ish break, uh, and we're just going to get a whole lot of info. Um, well, and we I'm we kinda, did kind of speculate on that. Be, I mean, you got to condense. Yeah three fan fests into this thing. Now, granted, they're probably not going to spill all the beans that they would have spilled. All three of us kind of think they're going to be a little reserved on this stuff, but three hours, that's still three hours, Tark. Yep, it's still three hours. Uh, Yoshi P did say in an interview with uh, Gamerscape, I believe, uh, that there would probably be an event in May, so we're yeah. probably not going to get everything, um, but we're going to get a lot. Kronos, you on the same page here? Probably about like a two and a half yeah, hour yeah. thing now. I, I think it's probably going to be like either an hour, like maybe it's like a 30 minute break, but I think it's probably going to be like an hour break in between. So you're, you're still looking at a lot of content, probably more than I previously said last week. I think we're going to need a little bit more than that. I think the May thing, though, it's probably going to be like, a, you know, they have, usually have like the media tour where they bring in like content creators and stuff. So I'm kind of hoping that they figure maybe, out a way to maybe. do that so that people can actually test stuff or like, you know, you can like see the buttons and stuff like that. Um, but I think they do have to save a little bit for that too. So I'm, I'm still sticking with like my one job prediction. I think that's what we're going to see, but maybe we see both. I mean, it's going to be a long presentation longer than I thought it was going to be. So, yeah, I mean, and they got to fill it with something. They got to fill it with something. And I think an hour break probably makes sense. Uh, right. Cause it'll be right around lunchtime mm -hmm. in, in Japan when, when this is, uh, when that break happens, uh, it'll be right around lunchtime. But uh, yeah, so I guess let's lay it out for all of you viewers, by the way, our plans. There will be no Relic Grind next Thursday night uh, at 4 p.m. Uh, that'll just go straight into phase stream at 8 p.m. Eastern. No Relic Grind. Relic Grind is moved to the 5th. One day later on Friday, we're going to go live at about 7.30 Eastern. Give us about a half hour of chit-chat with chat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just to, you know, uh, get everybody's predictions. You've already gotten ours on the, the previous show, but we'll get yours in chat. We'll talk about some things leading up, and then we'll be reacting live with our B-roll image here uh, that we use on the show. Having We'll stream the, the show itself, which will be simulcast in English, so we'll have a little bit of volume there so that, uh, so that everybody can hear it. You won't have to have multiple streams open at once. This could be your one-stop shop for commentary, hanging out, having a good time, and getting all the announcements. So tell all your friends. That'll start Friday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern on February 5th with the showcase kicking off at 8. We will go through the entire showcase, uh, and then we'll make a judgment call. If some of us want to stick around uh, or come back in an hour and do live letter stuff, you're totally fine with that. I'm going to be watching the damn thing anyway, so I'll leave that up to my hosts and how they're feeling that day. I don't want to lock you guys in for six or seven hours. It's going to be a long day. Or long evening. I mean, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be watching it. I'll tell you. Yeah, that. if you're, so if you're sticking around, then we'll, we'll <laughs> all just stick around together if we want to. It's fine. Get my popcorn. Now, the following week, we will be doing the show on Wednesday, February 10th, at seven o'clock. So it'll go a day earlier that week, because from the 11th through that weekend, I'll be out of town for my my 40th birthday. Um. On that show, we also have a special guest that I can now officially announce. We'll be joined by Brian, a.k.a. Ginger Prime, uh, will be with us on the show. And, we'll, of course, we'll be reviewing everything that the live letter and the announcement showcase had to, uh, to talk about. So, big two weeks here on the Relic Grind. We hope you'll join us, and we hope you'll bring all of your friends. Now, on to the news we did get this week. Uh... 5.45. Now, we knew basically what was going to be in this patch, uh, and none of that has changed, although we got a few little a little specks of details about some things. Uh, but we do now have a release date. Mark your calendars. Uh, you don't really need to. It's next fucking Tuesday. Uh, so, I mean, if you need to mark yep. your calendars for five days from now, go ahead and mark your calendars for five days from now. But yeah, February 2nd, patch 5.45 launches. Kronos, the big things in here, 
Uh, Bosdon Southern Front gets its expansion or next little bit of uh, final content. Uh, and then Blue Mage changes. So not a huge patch, but stuff we knew from the previous live letter was not going to make 5-4. It was going to be in 5-4-5. So no real surprises, at least yet, in this patch. Uh, but, hey, I, I bet you're excited for some more Bosja stuff. Yeah, I'm going to try to have everything done by the next show. <laughs> it's, I don't think it's going to be hard. I don't think it's going to be hard. Probably not the Blue Mage Rage. The, the Savage, like, Blue Mage Rage. But, um... I'll probably definitely have Boz done, I'm pretty sure. Like, I'm going to try to have the the 24 man's 100% going to be done. 48 man, we're going to see, because that's considered a savage technically, right. but I'm going to try to have it done. Blue Mage, I'll probably have all the spells and it'll be leveled. I doubt I'm going to be able to convince my raid members to do that just yet. We'll probably wait till there's like a little <laughs> bit of a lull and then we'll probably do it. Um, maybe I'll try to find some parties, but nice. we'll see. Uh, but I'm excited. Like, I, th th this content, I like this content. This is like raid content, essentially. Uh, not yeah. to like the same degree as maybe a savage or an ultimate, but it's raid content, and um, I have fun with that no matter what difficulty it is. And so. it's continuing your your relics, so that's mm -hmm. people always like more gear or at least better gear. Uh, I got to be honest, this patch really doesn't do it for me. Uh, but you you gentlemen probably could have guessed that. You know, I'm not huge on Bosja. I do exactly what I need to do in Bosja and then get the hell out of there. I have no interest in, you know, sitting there farming it and doing other fun stuff like that. Um, Blue Mage, I, I was so excited for that to be implemented. I was even okay with it being a limited job. I understood why they were doing it, even if I thought it was a little bit of a fucking cop-out on why they were doing it. You know, I couldn't argue against it besides saying that seems like a cop-out. Um it, it it did not hold my interest at all, even though I second mained a blue mage in Final Fantasy XI. So this patch really not doing it for me. What about you, Tark? Uh, isn't the biggest part of this patch the sky steals tools? Like, yeah, right. Oh, yeah, crafting, you're crafting right? tools. Come on. Come on. You got to get those, those nice shiny tools. Uh, yeah, it doesn't really do it for me. Um, I, I do like the Bosja, and I'll be doing that. I won't be able to do it as hardcore as uh, Kronos, but I'll be getting into it. Uh, Blue Mage, I, I got it leveled. I don't have all the spells yet. I'm just meh. Yeah, Blue Mage is you're meh. getting bumped to uh, level 70 cap, and you're getting the 4.x stuff unlocked now. So if you were run wondering what Kronos meant by the, the Blue Mage savages, uh, it's the 4.x material. The 4.x material. Not a huge patch, but... You know, it gets us a little closer to six. <laughs> it gets us a little closer. Uh, yeah. Adam, I know you wanted to talk, since we're going to talk a little bit about, or we talked a little bit about Blue Mage, and obviously we've joked about limited jobs and, and things like that. We did a love it or leave it segment, and all three of us left the limited job system and everything. I know you wanted to take the opportunity with a little bit of a slower news week prepping for the announcement showcase and talk about jobs in general uh, in MMO, specifically in this case, Final Fantasy fourteen, and more to the point, balance for those jobs. Right, yeah, so uh, you, you made a note in here too, like that, that if you look at this Twitter thread, people do not like that Blue Mage no. takes up any part of the content cycle, yeah. right? Um, the fact that they feel like their hours being spent on this job that people foresee as pointless doesn't make a lot of people happy. And it, and it gets, I tried to be nice. Hammered probably more than it should. It gets hammered more than it should. I, I, I tried I to be nice. But not that in the show notes. Yeah. It just says feedback and comments for blue mage. Aren't cheerful at all. Lol. Nope. So, so like the thing is, you know, the cop out that you mentioned, right. Is that blue mage is classically considered this OP job, right? It can do everything right. Like, yeah. In, in 14 cents, it's a, it can be a tank, it can be a DPS, it can be a healer. It can be whatever it wants based on what spell book you bring to the fight. And to them, they couldn't balance that in raid because of how rigid their their structure is, right? And they don't yeah. want blue mages everywhere. So I guess, like, my question was going to kind of be, like, it's kind of like an open question to you guys, too. Like, does balance matter that much to the raid scene? Like, does every DPS need to be able to, like compete with all the other dps is it okay to have a dps that's much better than all the others if every dps can clear even if they're not performing as well i, I guess it's really kind of what i want to kind of get your thoughts on it too I, I have a lot of thoughts on it tark uh, i'll let you go first since i went first on the uh the blue mage thing uh in in this 
the realm of rating, I think it just needs to be balanced enough so that no matter what regular comp you bring in, should be able to clear the content. Um, the side part of that is ultimates ultimates you know the min maxing spreadsheeting making sure your rotations are on point and your mechanics are good um maybe maybe not as much there um but for savage content i i don't think it should be just enough to to get everybody that can do uh, wants to do it on the job of their choosing should be able to do it and then we get to me i guess Mike. So, in the broad sense, I actually prefer when classes may not be exactly balanced. And one might be better at A, while one is better at B, and one is better at C. In the broad context of MMO RPGs in general, I like that. It encourages me to roll alts and play around with things. And I like the idea of somebody being better at something than, than somebody else. Um, in the context of Final Fantasy XIV specifically, though, I, I don't, while I think it would be interesting, and it certainly was the case in Final Fantasy XI, that flat out some classes were better at melee DPS than the other melee DPS, and some range DPS was better at, some healers were better than healers. That was the case in Final Fantasy XI. So I have seen it, in that environment, in, in a Final Fantasy environment. Uh, but I think you've got two things working against you to do it or have some type of mild unbalance. I mean, two unbalance just gets ridiculous because then it's just nothing but fucking dragoons everywhere. But a little bit of unbalance, I think, can be a good thing. There's two things that I think are working against it in Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, one is that the game stunningly has PvP. Uh, and... <laughs> whatever whatever anytime you There's introduce no pvp and there is no huge large-scale modification between abilities uh that are pve and pvp and and yes i know that final fantasy 14 does have some modification for abilities but it, when it's not then you actually have to balance the classes as best you can uh, otherwise, people scream or PvP is overrun by three classes, and that's it. But I think the bigger challenge in 14 is Yoshi P. Um, that is, he has done everything he can to make sure that the game never becomes a situation where when you have eight people going into a raid, they would rather you be on your black mage than on your red mage or that you would recruit a black mage over a red mage. That's why Bard got so many changes very early. Remember that you, yep. you Bard was busted. Yeah. yeah. Bard was busted. And it, if you were getting an eight person raid together, you had seven people to get together because one of them was going to be a Bard. It was going to be a yep. Bard. Uh, and that was it. And they did not like that. That's counter to everything Yoshi P wants to do. Now, do I agree with it? I don't think so. But I can understand why 14 can't do what 11 did. It's not their design philosophy, first off. And they've implemented PvP, which makes things a little bit different as far as class balances to begin with. But you have another interesting question here that, that you wanted to talk about, Adam. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I, I'll just quickly say that for me... I. Just short like thing. I think too much balance can be a bad thing. I agree. Is, is kind of where I want to go, um, and that you need a little bit of imbalance in order to keep things fun and interesting. So I, I worry that if they keep going down the road they're going down, and, and who knows if they ever get there because we don't know when the next game's going to come out. Uh, these classes are going to become so homogenized, and you can already kind of see it. Yeah. Um, that you know, if I play a bard, what? How is that any different than if I'm playing a machinist? Yeah, they all you know, right do. Now, the only they all do the same thing. Right. They just do it in a different path, a different set rotation right. type deal. I just have different button names, right? Yeah, exactly. Or like maybe a slightly different rotation. My job is basically the same. Which that, that's the only thing that worries me. And I wish they would mix that up a little bit. And I think Blue Mage had the potential to maybe do that, but I understand their decision. 
I, even if I don't agree with it. But yeah, the last one I want. I think was, Blue Mage uh, it, could have been. Job. I don't. It, Blue Mage bothers me so much I, because the the yeah, main argument yeah. was the insta death abilities, right? The dooms, the stuff like that. Yep. Yeah, make bosses fucking immune. I mean, how many of them are immune to stuns yeah, right. and kicks? And right. I mean, it, yep. it's not hard. And that yep. kind of. That kind of goes in with this last question, right? It's like, uh, so is a job's classic identity more important than balancing a job around all the regular content? Ooh. And it's like, so I wanted to say that because I, I feel like, like you, Mike, that Blue Mage could have been built in a way where you have these skills that you can use in the open world, and who cares if you can? Just make the dungeon bosses and all that stuff immune to those things. Even the mobs in dungeons could be immune. Who cares? Like, would it be such a bad thing if a Blue Mage could go out and get all these abilities, have... Like access to these skills that maybe other jobs don't have access to because they're different, right? And then they can tool their kit to raids. Is that like so bad? I guess. I think a creative like, way to do it would have been to make those abilities you were worried about the blue mage limit break. I think that would have been a, a nice little solution. So I, I forget off the top of my head how many there are. Let's say there's three, right? A, a doom and a, a death and whatever. Let's say there's three abilities they were really worried about, particularly when it came to dungeon bosses, stuff like that. Um, either do what you do for PvP and modify it so it's not insta death; it's X percentage, you know, uh, damage, something like that in in uh, dungeon content or raid content or eight person content, or make it there. You know, here's the three abilities. And Kronos, one of the cool things about Blue Mage is you get to pick what your limit break is. One of those three, and it has to be two bar or three bar, right? You know, or just make all three a one bar, two bar, three bar. I thought that could have been neat. That could have been neat. And I would have been okay with, hey, you know what? Doom isn't going to kill fucking Titan. It's not. But it's going to do 6% damage. And then it's basically on par with all the other limit breaks anyway. <laughs> you know, The boss right. is at 5. Do it. Do it up, Tark. Do it. I think they could have done that. But I think, yeah, the idea of we want the Blue Mage to feel overpowered because the Blue Mage is an overpowered job, but we don't actually want it to function as an overpowered job definitely overrode decisions here and i think it does on the other classes but i'll let tark go on this one um for most games i would say no the class's identity maybe doesn't necessarily need to match up with its balance 14 is a different case though i th this series has been going on for decades and I feel some of these jobs are just so entrenched that it's it's just part of it. Um, so I feel that, yeah, the, the identity of the jobs is more important than the balance. Are they really, though? I think like, so. granted, I feel, yeah, so. I feel that. they've been around for decades. But if you go back through any of these games, right, White Mage has not always functioned in a lot of the same ways as as we tend to imagine them black mage has had multiple changes and iterations throughout the final fantasy franchise now dragoons are just fucking dragoons it, but there was a time there was a, i forget which game off the top of my head dragons didn't jump so <laughs> like they have had differences and yeah you you still know a dragoon's a dragoon even if the abilities are different right you know yeah, the I basic guess. concepts of the job enough that in some games they didn't even give them jobs, but you know Freya is a dragoon, right? Mm -hmm. Just because of the functionality. So there is certainly an identity there, but I don't think that that necessarily means you can't play with that identity a little bit, Kronos. Yeah, I guess, uh, like, another question. Like, Mike, you play Red Mage, right? Yeah. Do you have an issue with the fact that, like, your heal isn't really... Like, like for cure, does it really matter? Other than the fact, like you're using it as a filler spell to then raise someone, right? Yeah. Like raising is really cool. They they have that identity. Like they raise yep. like nobody else's business. But are you like? Do you feel like? As I, I hear this complaint a lot from like more casual people, to be fair, um, that like, oh well, my my for cure, I can't cure anybody with this. What's the point of this skill? Like, is that bad? No. Like, should they should should they be able to cure more? Do you feel no. like that's okay how they are? I feel I I feel like it is one hundred percent okay the way it is. But again, this is coming from somebody that hardcore Final Fantasy eleven Red Mage forever had a very clear identity and party role there, and it was not to heal, mm -hmm. but it was occasionally right. to drop a little bit of a heal, take a little bit of a pressure off for two seconds type deal, give Tarkoth two clicks to get some mana back type deal. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, I, I like them in this game. Uh, and I, I, I love I, them I like in 14, too, you know, uh, as well. I, I But I realized going into it that 
my damage spells aren't going to be as strong as my black mage, which is my other, like, red mage, black mage are my two mains in 14. Uh, white mage is, like, you know, not a main. It's right under there. I, I realize going into it that that's going to be the case. So, no, it doesn't bother me uh, that that's a bit different. But, again, to Tarkov's point, it doesn't bother me because that's the class's identity that I associate with red mage. <laughs> so, it's... I kind of proved Tarkoth's point by saying that. <laughs> All I'll say is when I came into Realm Reborn, I'm like, I'm playing White Mage because I want to play White Mage. I want to play Healer. I don't know what the Scholar is. I'm going to play White Mage. So that's what I started with. And then Heaven's Word came out, and I get learned to appreciate Scholar, but I still love White Mage. White Mage is my passion. I think you're just lazy and you want your pet to heal. Um... <laughs> I love that. That's so good. <laughs> so, yeah, I kind of agree with you, Adam. I, I think a little unbalance would be very, very good for the game. But I also realize it's probably not going to happen because that's the design philosophy behind the game is to avoid unbalance. Yeah. I, I like that no one gets laughed out of a raid. I don't think yeah. that should ever happen. Like, I don't think yeah. it should ever be exactly. to the point where like one class, even... Even if it can clear, you know, because like if, if there's a 4,000 DPS difference or something, I'm throwing a number out there, right? Like, you're not going to want that class. Because yeah. like, why would I bring it when I can bring this other guy that does 4,000 more just by doing the same thing? Yeah, and then it turns um, into, too, like World of Warcraft has this problem a lot and still has this problem, you know, even in Shadowlands all these years later where it's, okay, the new expansion's out. It's been out for three weeks. What's parsing highest? Because that's, yeah. that's what I'm going to play. Uh, and there's yeah. a certain, you know... Uh, joy in Final Fantasy not being like that. Now, you know, does Black Mage do more burst damage than than this damage? And of course, yeah, there are slight differences there, but over the long term of a, you know, a six-minute boss fight, everybody's relatively equal, assuming equal skill and equal gear levels, of course. Yeah. yeah. I, I think the only the only people that get the tax are the range, the physical range DPS. They get the, uh, they get the DPS tax because they can move. Yeah. But that's the only thing. I, other than that, I think everything else is like your melees and your casters are right now roughly doing about the same amount of damage if they're really good, you know. So <sighs> blue should have been regular. Should have been regular. I, I I really wanted it to be. I, I would have totally been okay if it was able to do every role. Uh, like you just have a job. Uh, like, I don't know. And I'm not yeah, gonna I'm not gonna be yeah. disappointed if we don't get a limited class, but I, I think we're going to, unfortunately. If the X R can do it, why can't Blue Mage? <laughs> <laughs> Come yeah. on. Well, if you're looking for something to do uh, and kill some time before the announcement or before the expansion itself comes out, there's a new Final Fantasy XIV collaboration coming. We all love these. Oh, wait, it's not in-game. Uh, <laughs> Adam just shaking his head at me. Uh, Final Fantasy XIV will be collaborating... With Saki, the Yum. Mahjong manga. It's kind of a Mahjong spin-off thing. It's actually published by Square Enix, so maybe it's not as odd as it sounds at first sight there. But uh, yeah, it's not in-game, but some Final Fantasy stuff will be happening on their side of the board. I gotta say, Tark, I did not see this one coming. Yeah... Well, and we're, actually, we're going to talk about this a little bit later, but, you know, they seem to be going down an, an anime manga trying to get into that Japanese culture, um, maybe hopefully push it to the West a little bit. Okay. <laughs> this, if that's the goal, <laughs> if that's the goal, I don't know if this is where I start, Adam. I, I just yeah. don't think this is where I start. No, I, I, I'm wondering yeah. if like maybe like Mahjong and stuff is like, I mean, obviously it's more popular in Japan. Oh, yeah, it's huge I wonder if, in like, Japan. The, what, like when they added it to the game, I'd be interested to see. Because I mean, I played it in the game. I learned how to play it. I got the orchestra and roll and I haven't played it since. But, um, Like, I wonder how many people actually play it that play the game. And like, if maybe that's like the interest level that drove this decision. I don't even know if it's like a bringing something over here kind of thing more. So maybe appeasing the people that like it over there. I, I don't know. It is definitely a collaboration, I think, that heavily favors our Japanese brethren. So uh, I'm sure many of them will enjoy it. And I'm glad. I'm glad. I never want to 
not have collaborations because they're not for everybody. No, fuck that. Who right. cares? Uh, I'm all for it. And hell, somebody that's into the manga now, now may see a little bit of Final Fantasy XIV, wonder what the hell is that, and jump into the game. And by the way, your base game and your first expansion are fucking free, people. Come on. Get to level 60. Yeah, you can't, you can't beat it. You can't beat it. We need more people to fate grind oh. for relics in heaven's word. So, <laughs> so come on board. Come on board. Uh, okay, so this, I wanted to, I really, really wanted to talk about this. This really isn't news. But we've talked about things on this show where, I mean, like it or not, I, I think MMOs have a, uh, a bit of trash communities when it comes to the large scale sometimes. Uh, some more than others, obviously. Um, Final Fantasy XIV, I'm sure, you know, has its fair share of knuckleheads. Uh, but mm -hmm. they seem to be the uh, quieter minority than, say, in like a, a World of Warcraft or, or other MMOs. Uh, and we've talked about some wonderful things that the community has done. This has got to be, I mean, this almost brought a tear to my eye. This one almost brought a tear to my eye. So here's the story coming from uh, Alex Walker over at Kotaku. Excuse me. Uh, and I'm going to read this first little bit for you for as a little bit of a, a background. After putting everything on hold because of coronavirus, Final Fantasy XIV restarted automatic demolition of player housing back in November. We reported that on the show. The idea was to free up more housing and land, something that's been a bit of an issue in the MMO, which we're going to talk about in a minute. So when one Final Fantasy XIV player moved into their new house over the weekend, they received an unexpected request. The plot, someone told them, used to belong to a player called Wileyam. He was a kind, or I guess a take on William, Wileyam. Uh, he was a kind and generous and very loving warrior of light, and he was very special to myself and my entire free company, the message read. He passed away in May, so that spot, that plot of land that, that uh, this player's house was on, specifically holds special meaning to us. The player thanked the Aussie person for moving into the plot, and in honor of their late friend, they asked if they could send them a gift to store in their home as a memory. And of course, the person did, and the house is public so that they can still uh, head on in there. There was a whole memorial. I mean, just talk about great stuff. Like, I, like if I got that, like, hey, this used to be, and I'd be like, oh my God, who the hell? You, you can have it. You can have the house. Yeah, Faye and Chad, who let the onion cutting ninja in here. It's oh absolutely <laughs> one of the sweetest things I think I've ever seen. And I, I'm a big fan of like those memorials for friends that have passed away in games and and things like that. But this is is really touching. Could you imagine, Adam, you save up, you save up, you save up, finally a plot becomes available. You get that house and then this message is waiting for you and you're like, Oh my god. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It says a lot about the community. It really at least does. That, you know, majority of the community, which is which is nice. I'd, I'd honestly probably just offer the house to them. Right. I mean, Although, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's, uh, that's tough. They probably, they that's probably tough would be too. Like, yeah. we don't even know. Yeah. yeah, we don't even know. Like, this guy might have done that too, and then they probably were just like, "No, you keep it," because they said they were happy for yeah. him, right? And yeah. Just let him have the the item, which is really cool. So. It's really cool. Um, tweet tweeted by the Star Sybil was on the topic that was this line. It is a very special home, and it is a very nice location. I do hope you enjoy it, and thank you so much for your kindness in this. Just a very, very touching Final Fantasy fourteen. It is heartwarming, Dave. Targoth, you're over there bawling like a little baby. Yeah, it, it's so good. Because uh, this could have gone the other way. They're like, no, you piece of crap. You, you got to... Demand them to sell it. Try to guilt trip them. No, they said, you know, I hope you enjoy the spot. We just want to let you know that the person that used to live here, we appreciate it, and we're we're, we're grateful. You're happy to have the spot. Hope you enjoy it. Yeah, and you gotta you do this. You gotta feel for to them too, because they would friend. visit his house knowing that at yeah. some point auto demolition is going to take this house and it's it's going to be yeah. gone. So. Um, I think that segues nicely into maybe not as cheerful a topic, and that is the fact that housing in Final <laughs> Fantasy XIV continues to be an absolute nightmare clusterfuck. And that is despite 
two years now of me pulling at least 14 different headlines with some variation of Final Fantasy 14 is finally fixing housing issues in the headline. <laughs> it still continues to be a problem. So first off, how many of us, uh, not free companies, private house? How many of us own a private house? Raise your hand. Okay, so one out of three of us. Uh, how many of us own an apartment in the game? I, I had one. Does that count anymore? Not if you I don't have it anymore, one. no. And then how many of us anymore. have a free company house? Okay, so we all have the free like, company house. own a free company? No, 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 no. You're your free okay. company. I mean, no. Yeah, no, our free company has one. Yes. God, no. Not, are you the owner of it? No. Um, okay. Now, since the two of you don't own private housing, let me ask you this. Is it because you just have no interest in it? You don't want to spend the money on it? It's not available? What is the reason that you don't have one, Adam? Uh, I'm not as interested in it. Um, and if because I'm not really interested in it and the way it kind of goes, um, I'd rather someone else have that that's actually going to put time into it. Um, the reason I had an apartment was just because it would seem like a fun thing to do at the time. And then I switched servers, so I had to demolish it uh, when I moved from... Diabolus to Lamia. <laughs> That's, and I just never bought another one because I never used it. That sounded a lot like a college student. I got my first apartment because it seemed like a fun thing to do at the time. <laughs> a year later, I moved back in with my parents. <laughs> uh, as, <laughs> as an FC, though, uh, we do a lot of stuff at the house, and it's kind of fun like to do it together. Um, so that's kind of like my like what I do with housing, and, and I would never do that on my own. So I, that's why I don't have a personal house. Parker, like, I've never even tried so yeah, you didn't sorry. move back into your parents. You moved into the frat house. Got it. Okay. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. <laughs> what about you, Tark? Why, why don't you have one? Just a money thing, no interest thing, not available thing. My interest isn't high enough to join the rat race to secure one at this time. If there are more readily available and, you know, there's a spot here, there's a spot here. But when a new spots come out, it's just such a cluster F that yeah. I don't want to deal with that. So yeah, if one was there's a readily hidden. available, if there was more availability, yeah, I would probably get one. But yeah. I'm, it's not priority for me to get one. I don't understand why this there's continues to be an game. issue, yeah. Adam. I mean, there's a hidden savage in the game they don't tell you about, right? Yeah. Housing savage. Uh, right. yeah. Housing yeah. savage. It, it's, a real, it's a real thing. People talk about it. Uh, I, I, I mean, I, I, it is like it I boggles know. my mind why this hasn't been solved yet. Like, and, and we always get the same reason, right? You know, there's not enough server space. 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 Really? Because you keep seeming to find server space for other things. You found you found server space for fucking Blue Mage. Uh, <laughs> that's at least two houses right there. <laughs> I don't know. Size one. Do you have like a drum sound, dude? That's pretty good. But um. Uh, all joking aside, though, I mean, honestly, your player base is as big as it is. It's as stable as it is. It, why hasn't this just been addressed? Like, once and for all. Final Fantasy XIV 2? I, I, I don't know. I don't maybe, know. Maybe, maybe, maybe the spaghetti code is worse than we think. Like, I don't, maybe there's, like, some, like, problems in the back end that they just can't. I don't. But then they're doing the Ishgard stuff. We know we're going to have housing wars, right? With that. I, I'm just, I'm really sick of hearing it, server space is the issue for everything. Remember our inventory initially? Oh, God. That's so horrible. Right, yeah. Like when 2.0 two, right, two though... oh first launched, that was the reason we couldn't oh, have bigger was... inventories because <laughs> server space. Yeah. I mean, I know people that have like more than one house yeah. too, right? So there's yeah, like there's people that have like one, two, three houses plus a free company house. That's like four plots right there that they've taken up. Which should have been unlimited, think... limited from the beginning, but yeah. that's another issue. Um, and then the apartments are kind of like, like, I, I mean, that was kind of, they tried to like appease people with those, but those are just like, I don't know. <laughs> then you got the opposite end of the spectrum. I don't know if the two of you are familiar with this at all, but Elder Scrolls Online, right? Where I can own, <laughs> I can own <laughs> a house in any of the housing districts throughout the entire game. And they're not just houses. They're big like dimensions, almost like Rift does it. Some of them are little like one room apartments in in a city but some of them are like huge outdoor indoor furnish it all mm. the way you want and i can own every single one of them not just one at a time i could literally if i had enough in game gold or i wanted oh. to spend cash shop money i could i could own every single one of them it 
and Elder Scrolls is becoming one of my favorite MMOs this last year after having basically abandoned it every time I get to level 12 when an expansion comes out. But I just, I'm like, if Elder Scrolls can figure this out, surely, surely Square Enix can figure this out, Dark. And it's Bethesda. And, and, and it's not it, even bugged. I don't understand it. it. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's got, he's singing them all, all day. Six? Come on. I don't know. Maybe it is all the way back to PS3 spaghetti code. I don't know. Maybe they're like, you know, at this point, it is what it is. We'll fix it on the next game. Like, yeah, I, uh, I wish I could like get inside there and, and look and talk to people. Not like I could fix it or anything. That's not I what I'm claiming. But I would I would love to just like go look and talk to them and just be like, because there always just seems to be issues. As much as we love the game, I don't think there's anybody on this panel or even in our chat that would uh, argue the fact that there are some archaic things still in Final Fantasy XIV when you compare it to MMOs uh, that are on the market today, and not just new ones that come that have come out, which you could argue, hey, it's older, but even its contemporaries. There are things WoW does in a much better way than Final Fantasy XIV does, and we normally hear server architecture. And, and obviously, I'm a software engineer. I get that aspect of stuff. I get that your outdated code may cause limitations and issues in things you can do going forward. But it's also been eight years. You no longer support the PS3. How have we not at least started to move past this besides we're going to open up a new district and, oh, they're gone. Why does this keep happening? How many years did it take them to fix Chocobos? I mean, (laughs) this is a lot bigger than Chocobos. They fixed them? (laughs) Well, you can have them out and be in the duty finder. So there we go. <laughs> right. That, that was their, that was the thing they had to fix. Yeah, and and that took years. Faye and chat. Yeah, code base can absolutely get that bad, but at some point, you know, they've upgraded servers, they've relocated servers, they've condensed servers. I mean, you've started changing core architecture at that point. You've stopped supporting the PS3. You're into the PS4 and the PS5 now, which, by the way, I, I, I don't see any way around us getting a PS5 uh, PS5 uh, announcement next week. We, we have to get the, the PS5 release. And I still think we're going to get a little bit of Xbox chat in there as well. But housing, God, man. Elder Scrolls Online. I, I don't know when did Elder Scrolls Online come out? <laughs> I don't, I don't even know. I'm going to look. I'm going to look. After 2014. Uh, 2014. Yeah. So it's what, like two years younger? Like Two years younger. Uh, how, well, you how's the it. demand in, yeah, in Elder Scrolls? Yeah. Because the, the demand in 14, like uh, everybody I talk to wants a house. Everybody. I talk, almost everybody. Um, and like I said, I have free company members. Sometimes some of them have three houses, right? Um, and I don't know if they can ever catch up the demand in this game. I, like I, they'd have to put in so many wards. No, they they have to put they have to put in the limitation of one house per character. If you right, want, but then what does that do to the people who already have three? Right? Refund. Now you have to solve refund. That problem. You've done it before. You do a refund when you do server transfers. There's a, a prorated refund process that goes in with that during different times during server condensing and things like that. It's not unprecedented. You've done it before. Mm-hmm. There's new rules. There's a new sheriff in town, and he says one house per character. Doesn't solve it, but and as far as ESO's player base, yeah, admittedly it's a lot smaller. But w- when I have the ability to purchase, I don't even know how many different housing. To, there's at least thirty right. different places. And I will tell you this: the Elder Scrolls Online had its like reveal global release earlier this week. There were a hundred thousand people watching that live stream on Twitch. There were a hundred thousand. I was stunned. There were there was enough to break their website and cause the game to have issues that day too. So. Much bigger wow. than than you might think. Much bigger than you might think. And you, yeah, you got to yeah, believe I, it's I something that, that they're working on because they've known for years. But at this point, I tend to agree with you, Tark. I don't think we get this fixed until XIV no. dash two. Yeah, yeah. I think the only thing you're going to get right is you're going to get Ishgard and however many wards they offer you. Yeah. And then maybe like one more extension of wards because like. What is it? I don't even know what it has now because you have like the two sets of wards in each area per server now, and those are basically all filled. Because like it's gone, like it's like that South Park episode, right? Yeah. Like oh, it's gone. Okay, see you later. Like 
I mean, that that's because I remember when we tried to get our mansion that we have now for a free copy, and they had dropped that new ward in a patch. You had to beat the server queue, and you had to map out like a speedrunner, man. You had to map out your route to what plot you wanted to go to and know you were getting there first. And then and that's why I don't have one. It's it's rough. <laughs> it's rough. Worth my time. So. Oh my. All right, but when they the new game comes out, no PS3 to worry about, no PS4. It'll be on PS5, PS6, whatever, for the future. <laughs> And they can fix it then. Take a look at this little guy. And by little, I mean a big-ass jumbo chocobo plushie. In real life, that thing is two feet tall. Isn't that the cutest damn thing you've ever seen? Absolutely adorable. Do you want one? Yes. Let me tell you how to get one, brother. (laughs) You can head on over to the Square Enix store. It's not a great storefront. We've already talked about that, but that's fine. Mm -hmm. This guy's two feet, oversized chocobo plushie. The cutest damn thing on the planet. Probably the only good thing left on Earth. The only good thing left on Earth is this chocobo plushie. Uh, Pop in your login information, Tark. Put in your credit card. Nope. And uh, go ahead and get it. (laughs) Faye says she needs it. Well, that thing is $189.99 USD. Mm, But I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. I know. That's a little expensive. That's a little pricey. That's a little pricey. Glorified pillow. If you pre-order it, though, if you pre-order it, though, I'll give you a bit of a break. I'll, I'll help you save some money, Tark. Stuff's bad out there right now. Yes. I appreciate that. No problem. It's just me being Square Enix, spreading the love. For you, pre-ordered, $171. Oh, much better. <laughs> that, that I can afford. <laughs> Oh, oh man. it's a glorified pillow for crying out loud. I'm like, get someone on Etsy to do that. Have you seen the fat cat stool though? That they that they put up for pre-order, like yeah, four months. That's kind of cool. That's like that's like three hundred dollars, three hundred bucks. Oh, pretty cheap, cool. pretty cheap. Well, I'll tell you yeah. this: it's much better than Capcom selling a wool pea coat with no buttons on it <laughs> because Chris Redfield is wearing it in the village for fifteen hundred dollars. Jesus ball. Yeah, I'm not even joking. Look it up. Chris Redfield jacket, fifteen hundred bucket wow. uh, bucks. It's a wool pea coat, and the fucking thing doesn't even have buttons. <laughs> oh man! <sighs> wow. I do want to hug this thing though. I do too. It's pretty. It's pretty legit. Just not one hundred and ninety dollars legit. Yeah. That's isn't, there, yeah. isn't there a Tonberry about the same dimensions? Uh, I, it's not as Probably. cute as this. No, no. Look I'm, at this guy. But After hearing the price, Dave says it's not so cute. <laughs> nope. uh fate death is <laughs> dropping the jfc in chat so i'm assuming she just googled the p code i'm talking about to see if i was full of shit and found out i'm not full of shit <laughs> nope we tell you the truth here oh my what else we got square enix news handle it. uh oh this oh, is man. neat this uh this isn't uh you know like earth shattering or anything, but on gaming gumbo, we did a big segment a few weeks ago about anniversaries. And then we talked about Microsoft trying to buy Nintendo back in the day and, and stuff. So these are those we, on this show, we talked about uh, what Hitman, right. And Hitman uh, breaking up with square Enix because well, square yeah. Enix dumped them. Um, I like these historical things. Well, apparently um, square wasn't exactly sure if they were ever going to have a relationship with Nintendo again. Uh, and to be honest, they're kind of surprised that, fast forward to current day, that Cloud and Sephiroth are in Super Smash Brothers because they thought Nintendo wanted nothing to do with them after they left to go do Final Fantasy VII on the PS1. Uh, to the point that they said, though Sakaguchi states that there was no bad feelings between them, Kawhi responds that the storied game maker is just trying to be politically correct with that one. What I heard was Nintendo said, if you're leaving us, never come back. This is back when they was going to PlayStation 1. Uh, yeah. I, I love that. Uh, well, And they did technically, I guess, break up because you didn't see anything on the Nintendo's products Dude. for like five years after that. But I guess the dollar speaks a little louder right now. And all fences have been mended. So, 
I don't know. Well, and their de- their device is a lot better. Yeah. N64. And that well, was had... the reason. It wasn't, you know, it was what they wanted to do couldn't be done on the N64. Mm-hmm. <sighs> All right. You want to buy some more stuff, Adam? You want to buy some more stuff from <laughs> no, Square I'm Enix? Good. I'm broke, dude. I don't have a job. Can't afford. <laughs> Anybody in the market for a, a bride? Because if you kinda. get a, if kind of, if you get a bride here that's into Dragon Quest, uh, Square Enix wants to help make that marriage a little more special for Japanese parties, of course. Uh, they announced they have uh, several matching Dragon Quest jewelry items, along with a printable marriage registration form with a matching theme. So you can fill out your official marriage forms with Dragon Quest letterheads. <laughs> Dope. <laughs> That's nerddom taken to the next level. Oh <laughs> my god. You can pre-register to get these April 10th. Of course, you're probably only going to get these if you're in Japan, by the way. Uh, that's yeah. the only time place the pre-order is up. They're modeled after the Circle of Fire and Circle of Water that appear in Dragon Quest V. Um, and although in, in-game they are locked, like one has to be for the bride and one has to be for the groom in the game. No gender locking on these guys. <laughs> you can you can equip these wow. rings. Doesn't matter. Awesome. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. You get that joke? You get that joke, anyways. right? Like in the game, but in real people, anybody can wear Anyway. Anybody can wear them. You want to get married? Dragon Quest theme? There you go. That would be funny during the wedding ceremony to try to put on the wrong rings. And it's like, it won't go on. It won't go on. Oh, it's, it's the wrong gender. Th- this gear is gender locked. Um, <laughs> you bought the wrong ring, dick. Uh, <laughs> it's been over 24 hours. I can't return it to the vendor. Um, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> God, what is wrong with us? Uh, oh my goodness. There's also an Aerith bracelet from uh, the Final Fantasy VII remake. That's available for pre-order, too. It seems like Square Enix really would like to make some money. Oh, my goodness. Um, yeah. Avengers will do that to you. Oh, damn it, you beat me to it. <laughs> Here's oh, where I think they could make Avengers. a little bit of this up. Have any have any of you either played the Deus Ex series? Adam, you ever played Deus Ex? Particularly Some the newer ones, like the, the new one, Mankind and y- Humanity. I did humanity. not play the newest ones. No, none of those. Tark? Uh, I've played a little bit of both of them i haven't completed either um but i heard that they're better than a certain other game that came out recently just a little bit little bit little bit uh, and cyberpunk 2077 obviously does get people that are into steampunky type uh futuristic um motifs or themes to kind of think about deus ex great series i love the game but you know only selling a million titles just isn't enough these days uh, yeah. When you're Square Enix, apparently. So, I, I, honestly, I think that this is one, and this uh, Gamer Rant uh, agreed. I, this is where I, gra- I thought got this topic from, because they said, hey, it's time for Deus Ex to make a comeback. And, you know, I was like, hell yeah, it is. Hell yeah, it is. They're fantastic games. You can normally grab them on sale. If Cyberpunk 2077 disappointed you and you haven't played them, great storyline, tons of stuff to do, tons of abilities and customization options and stuff like that. You have a great time. You'll have a great time. But it, it's just super immersive. Like, I don't know how this... Like, should We should get one for PS5, right? Like, there there needs to be a new one of these. You guys have never played I'm down it, for so. it. I mean, we got six, seven years. That's an eternity in game time, so I, I'm I, down I for it. They should it. definitely do it. I support it, but it just, it's one of those that I feel like it's never quite popular enough. Yeah, it only sells a million. I, I don't... Oh. And that's the whole argument, is that they are great games. They are beautiful games, too. So there is a lot of cost that goes into it. So to only make a million or uh, sell a million, I, I, I mean, I hear the argument, but God, they're so good. We definitely need one. On the other hand, CBR thinks we need a, a Kingdom Hearts remake now that we've gotten a Final Fantasy VII remake. No. Do we really? Nope. Nope. No. Like, I, I, nope. I saw Kingdom Hearts 3. It looks almost identical to Kingdom Hearts 1 still. Like, it's not like we have polygons versus HD rendering. Like, 
Oh, you have Kingdom Hearts like one, then one point two, then one point five, one point seven five. Like, they're good. Let's, yeah. let's, they don't. They're fine. Let's go for a coherent storyline first, uh, and then we'll talk about remake. <laughs> yes. We'll yes. talk about remake. Uh, what else we got on the Square Enix docket? Oh, the demo for uh, Bell and Wonder World uh, went live today. Uh, I got a chance to play it uh, earlier today. Tarkov, did you? I know you were planning to, I've but did your day? Basically completed it. You did it all too. Yeah, it's not. It's not I all did. that long. It's not all that long. Nope. You could even if you're just uh, farting around, you could probably spend like an hour in there and you'd be done. Um, and I'm. I got some footage here. Apologize for the diciness. I wanted to try and show different things instead of just like one level. What do you think? I'm, I'm before I jade anybody's opinion in any way. What do you think, Tark? As somebody who was kind of like, eh, I probably won't buy it, but if you lent it to me, I'd try it. Type deal. Yeah, I'm, I might rent it for my boy to play, but I'm not gonna purchase it unless it maybe gets down to like twenty bucks. Um, it's it's cutesy. Uh, platforming's okay. Very simple. Um, every, everything's just one button for all the costumes. Um, I do like, like my favorite ones were the sheep and the, uh, kangaroo. Uh, I like the ability to float and kind of jump slide. Um, but yeah, it's, it's okay. It's a decent platformer. Yeah. It's very in the mold, uh, Adam of a Mario 64, you know, collect a bunch of gems, collect, stars in the level except in this case the stars are replaced by statues this is uh the world one boss that we're seeing here now um it is simplistic on the controls but it's mario 64 simplistic on the controls like you jump that's your thing Mm. it's not anywhere near as smooth uh as even mario 64 much less jumping forward to you know, some of the more the more recent Marios that are a little more complex. And again, we're only getting a, a handful of levels here. Maybe the complexity does ramp up. But literally, like five, Tark is right, like five buttons on the controller jump. like <laughs> And not in different... Or do your action. Yeah, or yeah. whatever the action is for the costume you have, which you... So you, your hearts, your health is basically the number of costumes you have on you. Um, and you can... You're capped at three. So you might go through a level, pick up three different costumes and the wolf gives you an attack ability and the pig gives you a thumping uh, ability like you see on the screen right there now. Um, And if you get hit, you lose the pig outfit if that's the one you're wearing. Uh, But it's also one of those games where you might get an outfit nine worlds down the road and come on back to initial levels because there were sections you couldn't get to with the outfits that you didn't have then. Then there's a whole like lobby area where you're feeding all these little fluffy things that are cute as hell. And I'm sure we'll be able to buy them for $190 soon. Um, (laughs) You feed them and you get them to spin in this wheel to build up this structure in, in the middle of your little lobby area. Uh, So it's a, there's going to be a lot of replayability. I'm with you, Tark. I did enjoy this. I didn't find the platforming nearly as solid as I had hoped it was going to be. The controls do feel a little floaty in in some areas, and I'm not talking about the bunny who is meant to be floaty uh, with the the additional there. Watch this, by the way. This is the musical number after you defeat the first boss. Obviously, we don't have. Them. I, f- I found this very charming. Very, I like. I, I like this too. This was very cool. So the 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 baddie turns that farmer into the boss. You beat the boss. He turns back into the farmer. He's very happy. Adam, t- take a look at this. Watch this. Because we're going to watch this dance scene here. There's a whole musical number. That's fantastic. This farmer's got moves. I, I, I actually hurt. felt good in my soul kind of watching this. It yeah, was, it was, it was it's nice. super wholesome. The whole game is like super wholesome so far. Yeah. And that farmer's got moves. I don't know how old he is, but to do that no hands uh, cartwheel there, that's uh, that's pretty impressive. I, I can't stop seeing Bernie Sanders, dude. Yeah. Oh, see, Bernie you weren't Sanders supposed to say that. anything. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't supposed to say anything. I snuck him in there. <laughs> it's like, dude, that, that meme is like, where's Waldo, dude? I'm always looking. Like, where's he at? There he is. I snuck him in there. Um, It's still one that I'm going to buy. Uh, I Although I am, am hopeful, Tark, that it does get more complex. There does seem to be a little complexity. Uh, in particular, there was one spot 
the world is curved. It's built on a curvature. So as you're running through the levels, you can see the the world curving into view in some levels. And they play with this very briefly in a couple of spots where you have to move a sphere from location A to B and running and causing the the drawing of the world to curve into view moves the ball down hills. I hope that gets infinitely more complex. Uh, if you're not going to go full platformer, which I feel like from the demo, this didn't go 100% Mario 64 style platforming. I kind of hope you went a little more in the puzzle direction than at least the demo seemed to give. Did you enjoy that, that curved? Like the, I got the first look cause this was just in chapter one, the whole curve. Thing. Right. Um, like I got, I was like, okay, this is fine on chapter one. Cause you're on the, the outside. You're like walking on the world. Yep. I get it. But when it gets to chapter two, that flips it. It's, it's inverted. You're like on the inside of the ball. Yep. And I felt really queasy. <laughs> No, I was, I was, I thought that when the first time I noticed that the world was curving into view at all was outside the puzzle. It was just, oh, wow. I didn't realize that's what happened. And I immediately thought, I wonder if that's going to make somebody motion sick. Like I don't get motion sick. So didn't, Mm. I I had no problem with it. I thought it was neat. I thought it was visually interesting, but it's funny that you say that because that was like the second thought in my head was, I wonder if that's going to make somebody motion sick. Uh, Yeah. I got a little queasy on that. I hope they get more complex with it. I'm still going to buy it. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to pre-order it or anything. I'm a little less excited I, than I was for it. But the demo gave me enough. I just wish the movement didn't feel as floaty as it does. Just just running just hear, feels yeah. it feels not, not, not as tight as I would like it. But it doesn't have to be for the type of platform that at least the demo portrays. Mm-hmm. I want this to get more complex. I'm afraid that it might be so geared towards younger crowds that there's not going to be a lot there for us, Tark. That does make me nervous. Yeah, my um, so I don't know where your ranking is. I was at a five. I'm at a six. I I thought it was charming, um, cute. The visuals are amazing. Um, they're they're really good. Yeah, I, I I think it's it's nice. Um, but you know I can't give it more than a six at this point. Um, we we both completed it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. How many trophies did you end with? Or statues? I don't even know. I did it this morning at like oh. 10 in the morning while I was uh, finishing some show notes. If if I have it in the footage here, you'll be able to see it. But honestly, I wasn't even looking for, for trophies, so I probably didn't get as many as are available. Gotcha. But I did build... I did sit there and let that thing rotate to build as many... <laughs> in the center statue, I built... I figured that out by accident. Oh, what feeding the little guys the gems and all that stuff? Well, and then the, taking and them to the wheel the, the to little, get them to, to run around yeah, the hamster the wheel. wheel. Yeah, I just happened to be walking by it and saw it click over with one of them in there. I'm like, oh, yeah, because for the for the first two levels, I'm like, what is this counter? Thing? I still don't know what zero. the hell's going on in the game. I, it's, it's, yeah, the I, demo I, I, has I does not help there, Adam. N- nothing, nothing for story. All right, Adam, you've been looking intently. You've now watched the entire little, and I had like forty minutes of recorded footage. I just cut it down to four minutes of some different stuff. There's some other little neat things like mini games with Balan and his shadows and things like that too. Uh, That's what, a weird mini. What do you What do you think, sir? Uh, I don't think you're really to purchase this game. <laughs> I mean. I, yeah. Adam's like, honest. I'm a fucking grown up. I am not. But there's buying a Sonic this. costume. <laughs> it's not even about that because so I'll, I'll play like Sonics and stuff. But the, the thing is, is like I have nostalgia for those games. Mm-hmm. So like you know when a new Sonic or, or a new Mario comes out, like I have nostalgia for the character itself, and so I can forgive when I like get kind of bored with gameplay for those games because I, I'm playing a Sonic game or I'm playing a Mario game. And and, and the, while this is a Square Enix title, it doesn't really do that for me. Like yeah, I'm glad for people that are gonna enjoy this, and and if it's for a younger audience, that's great too. But it's it's not my cup of tea. That's all. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Coming out, uh, what March? March this year, March sixteenth. Yes. Or March twenty sixth. Sorry. We'll see what uh what ends up being the case here. I, do we even know what it's rated? I I actually don't think I know off the top of my head to be e right for everyone it's e10 so yeah maybe it is a little a little for the more for the younger crowd yeah it does have some themes about depression and stuff in there so it's e10 plus so 
We'll see. Uh, last couple of things here. Tomb Raider, not really news, uh, but 25th anniversary, as we talked about on Gaming Gumbo a few weeks ago, is this year. They will be doing some stuff. They've got a whole kickoff planned on February 1st. But they did release a little video on Twitter that did say, hey, no major title announcement anytime soon, which I think is probably disappointing for, for most Tomb Raider fans, even though you are going to get some stuff including the Netflix animated series uh, to celebrate the 25th. I didn't know Dallas Dickinson was the executive producer on all things Tomb Raider now. I didn't. It, oh, yeah. Okay. I didn't either. Yeah. yeah. Of SWOTOR fame, right? BioWare fame. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I didn't know. Apparently he's been for That's like cool. a year and in the video he's like, yeah, I've been in this role for like a year, but I haven't had a chance to really interact with anybody. Hi, I'm Dallas Dickinson. And I'm like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> That's where you've been. All right. <laughs> And on the gross side of uh, Laura Croft, uh, it leaked that she might be part of a Fortnite skin coming up soon, and that's just gross. Ugh. But we'll leave it on a good note, gentlemen. Did any of you take a look at the Outriders legendary armor stuff uh, that oh, they've yeah. been tweeting out? The like four-piece set bonuses and stuff. It's looking pretty sweet. Yeah, buddy. Um, I know this isn't and, in the in the notes here, but um, have we decided on what classes we want to try out first? That's what, I was gonna I was gonna ask that too. Yeah, I was looking at Technomancer, yeah. but I I, oh, me too. I then I can go Pyromancer. That's fine. Well, oh, I was, I was gonna, gonna say, say my the Pyro two. class is the one that looks cool to me, but I don't care either way. I'll, I'll play no, whatever. But. Okay, you you do Pyro, uh, Chrono. You do Pyro, uh, Mike. You can do Techno, and I'll do Trickster. That works. Trickster is my number two. I'm I'm good with Trickster. That works. I just like would like it known that chat when he starts bitching when we stream this at the February demo, <laughs> I did volunteer to leave Techno and go to Pyro, but then pissed Adam off. You just document that <laughs> because February twenty fifth, isn't it? Twenty fifth, I think. Thursday. I think that's correct. Yeah. 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 Twenty yeah. fifth. And Faye already gave us clearance to, to trade with Friday for that. So we're good. Uh we will be playing you know, that demo live. Thing provided it doesn't catastrophically fail in some way. Yeah. Uh, so let's slide over to love it or leave it. <laughs> well, gentlemen, I wanted to put a Final Fantasy 14 item in the docket today prior to the announcement showcase so that uh, we could talk a little bit about something that may or may not up here in 6.0 we're not sure yet been absent for a little while and i want to get your take on it love it or leave it gentlemen hildebrand quest lines in final fantasy 14 should the inspector come back adam love him or leave him i love the hildebrand stuff um it was really like to me the first side quest that felt like it mattered in 14 um, and I'm surprised that they kind of seem to have abandoned it, this uh, expansion. I mean, to be fair, the one kind of in Heavensward was a little bit lackluster, but I thought the Stormblood one was okay. Um, and then, you know, bring Gilgamesh back, it's always kind of funny, and I and I like the trials that are typically tied to them, so I, I love it. Tarkoth, you on the same page, or are you going to leave Mr. Hildebrand? Uh, as Inquisitor Seer would say, why do I feel as though I've stepped through a portal into an alternate reality unbound by the laws of logic i love it it's awesome <laughs> it brings some uh needed levity to this game and which i greatly appreciate uh, he's just such a knucklehead that you have to love him chat and, and the reason they they couldn't put him in for the expansion i mean you spent so much time on the first it's like how do you segue him into that or i don't know i don't think so, anybody even questioned if he just showed up oh uh, well but yeah I mean, the dude was literally a zombie at one point. We didn't question that. <laughs> uh, I think I think we're fine. Um, Papa Gigi. I, I'm going to go with love it, too. And what's weird for me about this one is a few years ago, I remember being on State of the Realm with, uh, with Mr. Happy uh, and being the one that was like, I could go without these. Um, but they grew on me. They really grew on me. Like and I was I didn't like them all that much in version 1.0 the the Hildebrand stuff and they put him in 2.0 because of how beloved he was in 1.0 and they didn't want to abandon it and I was like eh, you could have just left that in 1.0 and let it die as far as I was concerned 
But yeah, like uh, battle on, on the big bridge and, and the music and getting Gilgamesh and Anki do in there and and the quest line and the writing. I mean, it just all like grew on me over time. So I'm going to go with Love It too. That's a clean sweep. Three Love It's. Chat is Love It too. So make sure if you're watching this on YouTube or on readycheckradio.com, you chime in in the comments below with anything we've talked about today and your opinion on it. Or just your love it or leave it Hildebrand quest lines. Love them or leave them. Now, we'll be back next week, but remember, it'll be on Friday, 7.30 p.m. Eastern with the announcement showcase. We'll be streaming it live and reacting live with our chat. We hope you'll join us and bring a friend. But chat, speaking of that, while you're here, hang tight. Because after this stream, we've got a streamer coming up streaming some gameage for you. Miss Faye, how are you? I'm well. How about you? You got the Mr. mustache Mick? again, so that must Do. mean we're going into outer worlds. Back again. Chat might kill me for it one of these days, but hopefully, you can buckle down tonight and actually, you know, chew through some good content. You're enjoying it, though. You are enjoying. it. I am. It. I'm loving it. I have not enjoyed a game this much in a very long time. It's a great game. So I think it speaks a lot to it. It it really is, and I think overall underrated. I heard a bunch of good things when it first came out, and then just kind of never heard about it again. True, and that's sad. Well, you enjoy chat. I'm sure you'll you will enjoy it. So hang tight after post show. Here we'll go dark for like thirty seconds as usual, and we'll bring the stream back up with Faye Death herself in Outer Worlds. And we'll see you next week for the Relic Grind. Until then, Kronos, where can everybody find you? Uh, yeah, same as always on Twitter. So if you want to see me post uh, after I beat some Boz just stuff, that'll be the place. Tarkoth. Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, all at Tarkoth Gaming. I'm... Oh, oh, Saturday oh, nights. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. Oh, what, what, oh. what, what? Here, when? Here, Saturday nights, 9 p.m. Pacific. There you go. I'm Mike Byrne. You can follow me personally right there on Twitter at MagicMan1. But more importantly, follow at RC Radio and get tweets about all the shows, events, and streamers, and more. Until next time, gang, stay safe, and we'll see you out on the servers. Later. Later.